you serious? The coffee is awesome this morning. Matter of fact, talking about coffee, there's a missionary down in Guatemala. They call him Gospel Joe. He's down there right now, winning souls right in the right in the heart of Guatemala, making a difference, winning people to Jesus. I'm so impressed with missionaries. I love missionaries. I love the work they do for God. Well, anyway. He's got some good news besides the fact people are getting saved and coming to Jesus down there, which is awesome. But some of you have been sent me emails or have told me that for some reason on YouTube, you've set it up for my videos should be popping up right every time I do one. And all of a sudden they've quit doing that. For the last few weeks, there's been problems where some of you have not been able to get my videos. They've been going to the bottom of the page instead of to the top. Don't feel bad. It's not you. YouTube's having a problem, and it's happening all across the world. And Gospel Joe has not even been able to get my videos, uh, but this morning he sends me a message that, hey, it's working again all of a sudden. This morning he don't know where it came from, but Paul Begley videos have popped up on the top of his page again. He's sitting there in Guatemala drinking Guatemalan coffee out of his, are you serious, Jesus says coffee cups. It's almost like heaven, he said. And here's the thing. He says, Pastor Paul, for some reason I started getting your YouTube uploads again. It has stopped working for a few weeks. And then out of nowhere, it just started working again. I'm sitting at my computer listening to you and drinking Guatemalan coffee out of my, are you serious, coffee mug. What a way to start my day. Some of our group are leaving and going back to America. Some of the missionaries that are down there with him in a couple weeks. I'm trying to send you to Pastor Paul, some good Guatemalan coffee. What? Send it on, Gospel Joe. Anywhere in the world, there's some good coffee. It's got to make it to me. Ah! Uh, that's really good, Joe. I appreciate it. I will be honored to drink some Guatemalan coffee from out of the, the, the uh, land and the country of Guatemala. Oh, that's awesome. God's got people everywhere, folks. And there's some serious Bible prophecy going on right now. Matter of fact, can, do you have your Bible close? I got this sent to me from Jeremiah chapter 1. The Bible says, The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And it will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, every one against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom, and the spirit of Egypt, the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord, a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Now we know that Isaiah 19, 1 through 4, is being prophesied, is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. We know that Egypt had an uprising. We know the heart of Egypt melted. That was the fall of Jose Mubarak. We know that the idols out of the museum were King Tut and his artifacts and idols that he worshipped were, were at during the writing, it was broken into, and eight of his idols were stolen. Now, five of them have been recovered, but three are still missing. We know that Egypt is the land of Pharaoh and of mysticists and many false gods, including a lot of occult practices. The, the, one of the most evil books ever written by man, inspired by Lucifer himself, is called the Book of the Dead, and it's written, and it was written in Egypt. Now, listen. We know that the Egyptians are turning to charmers, familiar spirits, and wizards. And during this uprising and this trying to get and this revolution going on, that's exactly what's going on. Demonic activity in a major way going on in Egypt. We know that's happening. We know that neighbor has been turned against neighbor and city against city. And we do know that there's a council in charge of Egypt right now. But that council is very volatile, it's shaking, and is about ready to be toppled. Matter of fact, Philip of Alabama sent me an information that the, the prime minister there, Issam Sharif, Issam Sharif, has chosen a new cabinet. It, it, they're calling it the Revolution Cabinet. Many of the ministers that he's putting on that cabinet are brand new to the political scene, and he's hoping that's going to calm the, calm the nerves of the people. What you're seeing there, 
is the beginning on the unraveling of the council, those five military generals who've been running the country, basically, as they get prepared for an election. Now, this, the Bible says that the Egyptians will be given a cruel lord, a fierce king will rule over them. He's coming from the Muslim Brotherhood. He's coming from the Hamas. And you will see soon they will get their new president. He'll be a cruel lord, the Bible says, a fierce king. But then a young lady sent me a Bible prophecy, the next verse. And I'm stunned that I didn't see it. Look at verse 5. And the waters shall fail from the sea, and the river shall be wasted and dried up. Now, part of the Nile River right now, and there's major droughts in, that, in Egypt right now, and part of the Nile River is literally drying up as we speak. What? Are you serious? And then, folks, we do know that in Costa Rica, there was an earthquake uh, on Friday, on Friday, uh, July 15th, if I'm right, and the river disappeared. The river disappeared. A river disappeared. But this isn't the first time this ever happened. This, this happens sometimes major earthquakes can literally swallow up a river, taking the water underground. Or in some cases, earthquakes have actually formed new lakes or changed the total direction of a river, leaving the riverbed going one direction dry and setting up a new river going this direction. God is moving, but this verse is so prophetic that it's following what's going on in Egypt. You go right to verse 5, the rivers are drying up. The Nile is drying up in some areas in Egypt. Now, this is, this is critical information. So I want you to focus on these things of the Bible prophecies going on. Uh, also, Philip of Alabama told me that there's a veteran CIA officer. His name is Robert Baer. And he, he has declared that Israel will attack Iran in September. Now, this guy's been, and I, I'm doing a YouTube video on that. And I want you to you'll see that in just a minute. And that's powerful information because we know that this vote is coming up. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, that God said he would bless those that bless Israel, but he would curse those that curse Israel. And I got news for <laughs> Medulajad of Iran. If he continues, if he continues to threaten every day to blow Israel up, to blow Jerusalem up, he is about ready to receive the curse of God upon him. But let me also warn the European Union. Let me warn the United Nations. Let me warn Russia. And let me warn the United States of America, the very land that I stand on, that if the quartet that gathers in New York City on July 26th of this year, in a few days, if they get in a room and begin to debate Israel's future and decide that they're going to divide up the land of Israel and the city of Jerusalem and, get, and set up a Palestinian state against the approval and the wishes of, of Israel. And I can tell you, if you know the God's commandment, God's covenant that he has with Abram and with Abraham and the 12 tribes of Israel, there's no possible way Israel's going to give up any land. And so if these entities, the United Nations, the European Union, Russia and America, if they try to split up the land of Israel, they will face the curses and the wrath of God. And you can write that anywhere you want to. You can record that. You can put that on CNN if you want to. This is just a fact. It is the word of the Lord. Now, I've got a lot more to talk about. Um, the Indonesia volcano, I want to get to that today. That's Mount Lokan. And let me just tell you, this thing erupted twice yesterday. Excuse me. It erupted on Sunday. It has erupted twice today, which is, of course, July the uh, 20th. So on July 20th, it's erupted twice. And this thing was dormant for years. It just started waking up last week. 33,000 people live along the base, along the fertile f farmlands there. You need to get out of there, people. Hear me what I'm telling you. You need to get out of there. This thing is going to go. This thing is going to erupt it's dangerous to be down on the base of that mountain. I've been praying about that. There's volcanoes that erupt all over the world. And I'll mention it maybe, or sometimes I don't even get to it. But sometimes I get a prophetic unction of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, just like the Lord spoke to me and told me that Mount Merapi was going to blow, 
and I and 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 I predicted it would blow sky high. And 11 minutes after I loaded that YouTube video, an earthquake hit Mount hit Indonesia, followed by a tsunami, followed by the volcano mountain blowing off the top and killing hundreds and hundreds of people. I'm telling you right now, this Mount Loco, what's it called? Let me make sure I pronounce it right. Um, Lokan, Mount Lokan. People, get away from it. Get away from it! I'm giving you a prophetic word. Somebody get the word Indonesia. Because I doubt you're going to see it on MSNBC. I doubt even CNN's covering it. What's going on that a, that a Midwestern preacher has to pro prophesy and report the news? I got people telling me, and there's one guy made a comment on this channel, said he don't even like me. He said, I, I don't like this guy. You know, I, I don't like Paul Begley, but I watch him because he gets the news to us faster than the rest of the media. I'm going to tell you something. is isn't that I get the news any faster than they do. I got friends and researchers all over where. No, it's just I'll report it. These guys are worried about their propagandist attitudes seizing in the airways. There's a lot more to talk about, Hezbollah and Israel, and I got all kinds of stuff, and I got emails coming in everywhere. I'll be right back with some more news, Bible prophecy, but go to Isaiah 19, read that, read that, read that, read that, read that. Verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and now 5 is coming to pass right there in Egypt. I'm Paul Begley. Oh, I'm serious. And if you're watching right now saying, Paul, what, is, what should I do? What, what, what do I do? You're in Norway. You're in England. You're in Australia, New Zealand. You're somewhere in America. You're somewhere in Mexico. You're somewhere in um, anywhere in the world. What, what should I do? Guatemala. What should I do? I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to give your heart to Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sins. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved, the Bible says. Repent of your sins. Come to God. See, God is full of love. God is full of mercy. God is full of grace. Call upon the Lord. Ask Him for forgiveness. Repent that you've sinned. Tell Him you know you have sinned. And ask for His forgiveness. He will not only forgive you, but He will cleanse you from all sin. And through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, he will deliver you from the clutches of the devil, breaking the chains that bind your soul, set you free, and head you toward glory. Oh, I'm feeling good today. Mm. 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 I feel good today. I want to knock the devil out. I want a double dog dare the devil. Then I want to tell him right now that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Send me a personal message right now. Send it to me right here on YouTube. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Oh, come on, do it. We can do it right now. We can get saved today, right now. In Jesus' holy name, I believe it. Jesus.